This is an example of a violation of sutva, in particular the no interference part. So first, what does the no interference assumption say? Well, if we imagine we have some different individuals over here, and some of them are treated, and the other one is not, and then they have their outcome y over here. What no interference requires is that these treatments and outcomes are basically isolated from each other. So each individual's treatment or not treatment only affects their outcome and not the other individual's. So this would be violated if these uh, the treatment of the first person here has some effect on the second person's outcome, and maybe the third person's treatment also affects the second person's outcome. Uh, anytime there's sort of these uh, effects across individuals. So, and this could either be directly person one or person three's treatment is affecting person two's outcome, or it could be, for example, that uh, person three's treatment affects person three's outcome, and person three's outcome then affects person two's treatment. Both of those are a problem for uh, sutva and this sort of potential outcomes treatment effects uh, framework, at least in the basic presentation of it. So we, so as I said, these are often called spillover effects and that the sort of treatment of one individual or the effect of that treatment spills over onto other individuals. And these could be positive, it could be a helpful spillover effect, um, or it could be negative, but anytime there's sort of that cross individual effect. And in particular in economics, often we think more specifically of spillovers that come through general equilibrium effects. So again, that meaning effects where if you maybe treat a significant number of individuals, then that has an effect on an entire market, which then affects prices and wages that affect basically everybody, regardless of their treatment status. So to give a concrete example, well, imagine a treatment that is a new technology for producing cacao, which is the main ingredient for making chocolate. And imagine we're interested in uh, this technology because we're hoping it can help the earnings of individual farmers. Earnings. So that's the, the setup here. So if we imagine just giving the treatment to one individual farmer and nobody else in the world, what would happen is assuming this you know, technology works and increases productivity, that farmer would be able to uh, produce more quantity of cacao given the same labor and other inputs because uh, they have increased productivity and then they would be able to sell that for more total earnings. 
uh, because the price would be the same as before and they would have a higher quantity that they're selling. So for the individual farmer, uh, the effect on Y would be positive and would be just this increased uh, productivity, quantity output times the current price. If we think then about, well, what if this technology gets scaled up to, uh, you know, every cacao farmer in the world has it available or, or adopts it. Well, in that case, we would worry there could be important general equilibrium effects. Because if we imagine we have price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis, if we imagine Uh, here we have our global cacao supply and demand curves. So what this uh, technology would do if every farmer adopted it is basically for the same price, they'd be willing to supply a larger quantity of cacao because it's increased their productivity. So as usual, this sort of improved productivity is a positive labor, or sorry, supply shock. So it'll shift the supply curve out or to the right in this case on this graph. And if we think about how that affects the global cacao price, you can see here's the original price on the vertical axis. And now here's the new price at the new equilibrium, right? After the supply shifts to the right. So what happens is that leads to a drop in the global price of cacao. So what happens now is even though each farmer is able to produce a higher quantity, uh, their earnings, so the Y variable earnings, is also affected by this general equilibrium decrease in the price, which results all else equal in decreased earnings. So it's not clear if overall this will uh, increase earnings or decrease earnings because there's these two opposing effects, the increased quantity, decreased price. But the main point is, for this example, that we have a clear violation of the no interference assumption because when lots of, so even if we had a farmer like this middle one that does not get the technology, if every other farmer in the world does, that will decrease the price and thus decrease this middle farmer's earnings if they just produce the same quantity of cacao that they always have. So in other words, the treatment of all the other farmers is affecting uh, even the untreated farmers Y variable, their earnings, through this uh, general equilibrium mechanism in the global uh, cacao market that affects the price.